evening, viewers, and welcome to this edition of NTV Sports Page. It's Tuesday, the 10th of December, and I'm Curtis Morton. In our headlines, Virat back at number one. And in our feature for this evening, Vanessa Hull aiming for the stars. We'll take this break and I'll be right back. Welcome to Nevis. It's easy to believe that all Caribbean islands are the same until you visit Nevis. Nevis is the Caribbean of a bygone era. You will enjoy a most intimate vacation on Nevis. You're only a stranger here once. We offer exclusive and barefoot luxury stays. With only 400 hotel rooms, our island may be exclusive. But the warm, genuine and friendly welcome is just everywhere. We look forward to meeting you. Visit nevisisland.com Well, I'm back and we start with cricket. The baton of number one test batsman in the world has changed hands between Virat Kohli and Stephen Smith again, with Kohli surpassing Smith following a century in his team's inaugural day-night match against Bangladesh. While Kohli led the Indian batting effort, Smith failed to go past 36 in the Australian's home test against Pakistan, resulting in a swap at the top. The good news for Australia, though, is that David Warner and Labushang, who were in the red-hot form against Pakistan, moved up to number five and number eight, respectively. Warner compiled the second-highest individual score for Australian Test cricket, going past the 334-run mark of Donald Bradman and Mark Taylor in Adelaide, finishing on 335 not out, as Australia declared their only innings. Only fellow opener Matthew Hayden has a higher mark for Australia, 380 against Zimbabwe in 2003. Warner's mammoth innings followed a knock of 154 in the first test of the series in Brisbane, resulting in him jumping 12 places up the rankings overall. Labuschagne, meanwhile, was ranked as low as 110 at the start of 2019. His year took a dramatic turn when he became Test Cricket's first concussion sub during the Lord's Test of the Ashes series, slotting in a game in place of Smith, who had taken a blow to the helmet from Jofra Archer and going on to score match-saving last day 59. That won him a place in the 11 even when Smith returned, and he produced scores of 74, 80, 67, 11, 48, and 14 for the rest of the Ashes. His best was yet to come, though. In the home test against Pakistan, both innings victories, Labuschagne scored 185 and 162, completing a sensational change into Test Cricket's top 10 batsmen. We'll take this break, and I'll be back with our feature for this evening. This holiday season, it's the perfect time of the year to spend with the ones you love and show them exactly how you feel. Making the most of the season. So where do you find all you need to make this season the best one ever? It's Quartz, actually. Bringing value home. Well, I'm back, and tonight, tennis, and more so, local tennis, is in the spotlight. Nivijan Vanessa Hull was the lone female from Nevis who participated in the recently held International Tennis Juniors Tournament for persons aged 14 and under, which was held in St. Kitts. We spoke to Vanessa and her dad and coach, Elton Marcus Hull, recently. Um, Elton, first of all, um, you've been doing a lot of work with Vanessa and her sister. Yeah. Um, I noticed that, you know, you, you train them pretty regularly. What's the ultimate goal, really? The ultimate goal is for them to be professional tennis players. Okay. You know, so, you know, it's just, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, people have the misconception of what uh, a professional tennis player is. You know, they think that professional tennis player is the number one player in the world or the number 10, the one you see on TV. But it's not the case. To be a professional tennis player is it's the same as any other profession. You're a professional tennis player. If you go out there and you play well, you get money. And, okay. and that's, that's a professional, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm a professional coach, which means I teach for money, right? Okay. You know, it's the same. that's what a professional is. And that's basically the goal that we're trying to do. And then once you can get to that level, then, you know, you work hard enough, you, you get to where you want to be, right? Vanessa, you're part of this program. It's a grueling program. How are you surviving this? Um, what do you mean? Um, lots of exercise, lots of hard work. How are you surviving? It's hard because, like, you have to do certain stuff to get your fitness up there and your footwork. And 
I've had a few injuries, so it's been very hard, but I'm surviving and I'm pushing through it and I'm just grateful that I'm healthy enough to be playing today. And, and um, in terms of the ultimate goal, of course, you want that, you want it, so you're going to work hard towards it. Yes, of course. I want professional tennis. I want to be the best. Okay. You heard. Speaking of which, you recently took part in a tournament in St. Kitts. Um, what, what was the name of that particular tournament? ITF tournament, it's um, International Tennis Federation tournament, juniors. Junior specific. So what age group did that um, cater for? Um, Up to juniors. 18 and under. Yeah. 18 and under. So how well did you perform? Because I wanted to come over to St. Kitts and bring the camera to see you in action, but it wasn't um, convenient at the time. So tell us how well did you perform? Um, I performed at my best because of my injury right now and I think I could have performed a little better but I did I, did, I finished the match and yeah I, I pr could have performed better but it's all right you feel me? What, what about the scores um, tell us a little bit about and, and maybe maybe the, the type of player because maybe the player is at a different level than yourself I don't know tell us about the player or players you played against and the scores um, the score was six one six three. Okay. The player, she, she was a different type of player. I don't know if you know what is a moon ball. A moon ball is um, a ball that goes high and bounces deep okay. in the court, so like a lob. Mm -hmm. She's and good she, at that. Very. Okay, okay. <laughs> there are certain players you find in tournaments that just hit moon balls because that's how they win matches because other players that are at a higher level than mm -hmm. that person, mm -hmm. they're not so good at handling those moon balls. And that's something I need to work on. And okay. that's my goal for 2020, to learn how to play a moon ball better than how I played it. And she's, she said that she couldn't really handle my shots, so she just started hitting moon balls, oh. and she realized I was messing up, so that's what she did the whole game. And I couldn't figure out how, how to, to adjust it, yeah. in time, so that's what happened, basically. Coach, you would have been on the sidelines when you saw that and that she was in some difficulty with the moon ball. I guess you can't talk to her while she's playing, but um, how, how did you feel when you saw what the other girl was doing? Well, you know, it just, it's kind of sad because, like, we didn't prepare for it at all. I mean, we were hitting with uh, one of the junior guys who came from uh, uh, Grenada, but he left yesterday, or he left today. And, uh, and he hits extremely well. He made it to the quarterfinals in the, in the last tournament in Antigua, and uh, he got beaten out by the number one player here. So Vanessa was hitting with him a lot and keeping up to him, but we, we weren't prepared for the moon ball. And, you know, you... As the coach and you're sitting on the sideline, you keep saying, okay, make the adjustment, make the adjustment. But you can't it's, talk too much, right? No, we can't talk at all. Okay. You cannot okay. talk to the players once, they, okay. once they're playing. But, okay. you know, I think, uh, you know, the scores does not reflect the game. Right. It, was That's game. it was a good game. You know, uh, uh, the only thing, Vanessa kind of figured it out too late. You know. Uh, and, to cope with it. Well, no, once she, once she figured it out and changed it, she broke the girl twice in a row. Okay. Yeah. you know to come back uh, but it was it was kind of too late because at that point if you make one mistake then you're pretty well done mm -hmm. so you know it's like and that the this is Vanessa this was Vanessa I think six tournament ever really and so she just yeah. got to learn yeah she's got to learn and this is her first ITF juniors okay. Okay. so she just got to learn to deal with things when they're not when when they're not work, something not working, change it and, and, and deal with it quicker. And, and that's it. But I thought she, when she played doubles, I mean, she was fantastic. She was the best player on the court. Okay. And, and she was playing against three ranked players. Okay. So she was really, really fantastic. Beautiful volleys uh, when she played doubles. So it was, I was very happy about that. I, was, I wasn't unhappy with the game that she lost because you got to learn to lose before you can win. What you need to do is be able to adjust quicker. What's not working? change it right. and that's it so uh, i was very happy about that for the benefit of the viewers though because i do a little tennis myself mm -hmm. not very experienced at it but well the girls like your your, your slice nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy let's talk about your slice oh, so, boy. you know you're being a little <laughs> modest here yeah 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 okay so so explain the moon ball i know vanessa did you know, it's a high yeah, yeah. ball and so on. But could you give me a little more specifics on okay. the moon ball? Okay, the moon ball is a ball that they throw up. And they throw it and it bounces high. So you either have to come in and take it just as it bounces, mm -hmm. 
or running and take it on the full. Oh. But most people don't do that. They go back. And wait. And wait. Well, no, they have to go back. Mm -hmm. And it's just times when the ball's bouncing over Vanessa's oh. head. You see what I'm saying to you? Okay, so okay. Mo most people who do those kind of balls, once you're having trouble, they're going to do it with you all, all game time. until you can adjust, adjust to it. it. You know, and that, and that was it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, it, it happens, and, and we've seen it. It's just like she has to learn to adjust a little bit quicker okay. when that thing is happening and, and play it the, the way she should play it. Okay. But most people do run back to the fence even to hit those moon balls. Mm -hmm. They're horrible, but, you know, there's nothing you can do. Okay. So, you know, but I just, I just want to say, because, uh, you know, I don't normally give interviews. I'm not big on interviews. <laughs> But I just want to say, if anybody from Sinkits is listening to this uh, uh, interview, the guys from Sinkits did really, really, I thought they did really, really okay. well. Okay. When they actually played their game, they really performed, I think, be, beyond their skill level. Okay. They played okay. really well. I was uh, really happy Impressed. with how they, yes, how they played. Uh, so hopefully they can get some, you know, better training or more training. Uh, but yeah, same. but you know, yeah, I just want to say that, that the, 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 well. the kids from St. Kitts, I thought they did really well because it's one thing to practice. It's another thing to be in a game and sure. play well. And they played well in the game. So okay. it was good to see. Speaking of playing well in the game, you did, um, your dad mentioned that you did a lot better in the double stalkers to that. What was the scores and how did you feel about that one? Scores? Um, oh, uh, yeah, okay. wait, I remember. 6-3. Six, six, it was 6-3 six, six, three or 6-3 three in the second set or 6-2 in the second set. I can't remember. Okay. And who, who did you team up with? What, Kitty um, Shan, maybe? No, no, no. no. She, um, yeah, okay. she's from Denmark. And, Name and is Cecilia. And how well did you all work together? We work really well. I like her energy, her vibe. That's what I work off of. I work off vibes and okay. etc. Yeah, so right. we did. I liked her, you know? <laughs> All right, so going forward, what's in it for Vanessa? What's your next goal? You would have done the IGF. Um, you would have learned a lot from it. Um, what is the next, should I say, big tournament, the next big objective from here? Um, ITFs around the U.S. and in Canada. Okay. So I'm just going to be playing more ITFs and getting more experience and hopefully going deeper into tournaments, into ITF tournaments in the States and... You know, in kind of making new friends, I okay. guess. And, and getting into that professional thing. Yeah, working yeah. hard, getting yeah. less sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Elton, I must congratulate you. Um, lots of dads don't really go all the way. Maybe they do a lot of talking from the sidelines and that's it. I hope you do well. Bye-bye. <laughs> Wish you all the best, but you're there. Well, you know, like uh, right from the, the get-go, I always thought Vanessa and Alyssa really had what it takes to be a professional tennis player. They had really nice feel for the ball, you know, and, uh, it, you know, it's like anything else. If you work hard enough at something, you get to be really good at it. And if you work harder, you get to play it as a profession and, and make a little bit of money here and there, you know. It's just like anything else. There's nothing that's free and nothing that's worthwhile. It comes easy. It, it takes hard work and it right. takes a lot Sacrifice. of dedication and discipline, you know. And so, you know, that's what, that's what we're trying to do. So, you know, we continue working hard. And I think as long as we do that, then I think things will fall into place. Finally, um, Vanessa, I noticed that you do a lot of practice when the sun is pretty hot. A lot of the games are played in hot sun like this? Sometimes um, when I play like USTA which is in the US mm -hmm. back in Florida sometimes I would go on at 12 so, oh, so it's, it's pretty much like this. Yeah it's, it's just normal for me now because I'm so used to playing in the okay. heat. So you have from, to get accustomed. Yeah so it's good to play in the heat down here. I usually okay. play like throughout the day like lunchtime etc when it's really hot okay. so when i go into a game i'm used to it but yeah, the other person is over there dying you know <laughs> <laughs> all right well elton let me just say something about that the the thing is there's a board there's always a board of the draw and i think a lot of people who are from really uh colder countries when they see their game starting at 12 or 11 or 12 30 uh, and it's a hot hot day already a hot day it's always hot on the court I think they kind of panic a little bit and start thinking about the heat rather than the game. And so, okay. Alyssa and yeah, Vanessa, an exactly, you know. Yeah. So because even when we even in Florida, which is hot, I never find Florida hot. I never find Florida it's hot. Humid. It's humid, but the, and the girls don't really find Florida hot that either because you know we practice here. So mm -hmm. you know that's it. Well, 
Vanessa, I want to wish you all the best and um, going forward. And um, when you do become a professional, I'll probably move my house and see if I get some of the crumbs from the table. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, but certainly, I want to wish you all the best. And we look forward to hearing your name out there, hearing your name up in the big rankings, etc. All the best to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, and Elton, all the best. Curtis, thank you very much. Well, here's to wishing the two sisters all the best in their grand endeavors. That's our package for this evening. I'm Curtis Morton reminding you that you can watch sports if you're not fit. But to play sports requires fitness, diligence, and a sacrifice. Have a good night.